Greetings, everybody. Gleecon here again with another episode of Lore of Warcraft. We're continuing our hiatus from the Let's Plays um, with a few chronicles. And um, we're trying to do is catch up to where we were in the, the last Guardian. So we have a couple more things we need to talk about before we can jump back into the last Guardian. And then I think, by and large, um, we're going to be able to finish that tale. All right, so on the last one, we just talked about what the orcs were doing, how they established a presence at Black Rock Mountain. Um, it's really just the Shadow Council arm of the orcs, and they have been awarded Black Rock Spire because Ragnaros and the Elementals are not just regular Elementals. They're like Elementals on, the, on fused with the Void Lords, and they like that, one, the orcs are destroying everything, and two, that the this particular clan are all, they also want to promote the good of the Void Lords. So they say, okay, don't mess with us, don't come down too low, but you can have the Spire, which sets up the various uh, segments of Black Rock Mountain. All right, so this is going to be, stay a while and listen to this one. It's called The First Siege of Stormwind. Now, in terms of canon, this is whatever it's in the order that we've been going and this ha this is happening in that third year so after the orcs have been in azeroth for a few years they finally muster enough forces to siege stormwind or to make an attempt um they call this the first siege of stormwind because there were there's obviously more than one and there's more than one in the first war as far as the pre-retcon storyline of orcs and humans that were playing this is, if you remember when we read the manual, this is from the game manual. Before our video game even started, they had allegedly got this far, pushed forward, and sieged Stormwind. Um, so the timeline is a little bit murky when it comes to that. But So this is less um, important in terms of our game as it is to our book. All right, here we go. Brightwood, Westfall, and the Red Ridge Mountains were now under Horde control. The time to strike at Stormwind City had come. Warchief Blackhand scoffed when Gul'dan told him his mission to Blackrock Mountain was a failure. He had expected nothing less. He was prepared to crush Stormwind City without the help of borrowed elemental power. Thousands of Horde soldiers flooded through Elwyn Forest and established siege lines outside Stormwind City. They encircled the stronghold cutting off all access except for the sea. Blackhand ordered Kilrog and Chokal to lead the Bleeding Hollow and Twilight's Hammer Clans in an assault against Stormwind. To soften the city's defenses, the Horde bombarded the walls with siege engines through the night. At dawn... So we've got catapults in play. At dawn, Kilrog and Chokal launched their attack. Orcs charged the battlements while warlocks engulfed Stormwind soldiers in Fellfire, the losses among the city's defenders were staggering. It seemed to Blackhand that Stormwind would fall by midday. No one was more astonished than him to hear cries of an attack on the Horde's rear lines. Lothar had led the lion's share of Stormwind's knights around the Horde by sea, and he was now leading a charge through Elwyn Forest. The orcs in the rear guard were caught utterly by surprise, and the knights carved a massive gash into their lines. The Horde attack soon collapsed, the Bleeding Hollow and the Twilight's Hammer broke off their aggression and tried to push back the knights. Stormwind's enormous gates opened and soldiers poured out of the city in a counterattack acting as a hammer to Lothar's anvil. The orcs had no way to fight off the two-pronged assault. They could only run. It was the biggest disaster the Horde had ever suffered. The defeat infuriated Blackhand. He barely restrained himself from executing Kilrog and Chokal, but only because he suspected their clan members would revolt. The Horde withdrew to its holdings in Red Ridge to draw up a new plan of conquest. Okay, so we don't have much there, although we do see how the Twilight's Hammer and the Bleeding Hollow clans are going to be at odds with the Horde. Um, so that leads a little bit to our next Let's Play, which is going to be um, some Horde-on-Horde -horde action, that trope, where, where you get to attack your own forces. Um, so you could argue, later on in Warcraft 2, we'll probably do some sort of... Um, I'm sure they'll, they will have that, 
that horde on horde level or two and it'll be one of these clans so that'll be neat when we get there but so now we've caught up to that big point in the instruction manual and um for the most part we're caught up but i want to do one more little beat in these chronicles before we get back to the novel okay we got another episode in the pipes five by five i thank you so much for listening and i'll see you on the next episode of lore of warcraft